good morning guys um i've just been looking on the kawasaki uh parts site um and this is basically the same site for europe you know america canada uk all that lot because um, it shows prices in euro prices in dollars us and prices in pine sterling and i've just basically put in the zx10 part number for this and this is the um basically starter motor chain tensioner whatever you want to call it i kept calling it an adjuster um you know because that's just me <laughs> now the zx10 part number is three nine one seven zero one zero five five and it's available brand new still 140 pounds 151 euro or 180 dollars now this tensioner basically in this form has been around since certainly the gpz 900 the gpz 900 part number is again 39170 but then 1053 and looks exactly the same as far as i can tell um of course this tensioner is then used in the zrx12 your country might have a different code name for the bike but zzr12s and stuff like that except the part number then goes to 39170 and the interesting thing is the newer ones are cheaper for example they're 127 pounds 137 euro or 163 dollars and the only difference that i could find between the 1200 ones and the zx10 is if i just get my dick beaters in here and move this is that on the reverse side it's, a, it's okay to crush this in the vice because we're going to be taking this bit off anyway when we fit the um compton uh, upgrade part which I have yet to order anyway the only difference on the 1200 that I can see you guys may know differently is that there's a shim a very thin shim that goes on the back side which obviously brings it out a little bit more because it's absolutely crucial that the chain sits squarely in the blade um, so you could in theory if you wanted to replace it the thing is replacing it with a new one and the interesting thing is the springs inside are available separately which suggests obviously a spring is a wearable item so it suggests that the springs inside should be replaced every once in a while i don't know um but why sell them separately else because it's unusual especially for the japanese uh, to sell a component component like this with individual parts it's usually one unit uh, slap it in and you know you might only need like this rod or something or this spring um, this spring and the little spring around there are available separately because obviously they weaken and i think that's where half the problem stems from as these springs weaken this can come back and hit the clutch so the design itself is not particularly at fault but we all know i mean the springs are on basically you could say they're under constant tension but obviously as the chain goes they're off and on off and on off and on so i mean the adapter is going to cure it completely it doesn't matter what sort of spring uh, state the springs in because it's never going to lose that much tension but perhaps it's just losing enough to cause the problem in the first place which is why it's available as a separate item but um in the next few days i think i'm going to order the compton part which actually sits flush in here so it does away with the small spring on the side which is there and for a small spring you know it's got some oomph but it does away with this spring 
and the Compton part sits inside here. I think it actually butts up against this. And it sits there as a solid part. And then the rod uh, goes through it. But the rod's then only allowed to move so much. This, this isn't obviously its tension position. But um, it only like allows it to move sort of that much uh, to tension the chain. But I just found it interesting that the springs were available, which suggests they are possibly a service item. Who knows? So yeah, the only difference that I could find is the thickness. And I'm, I can't for the life of me imagine that they did. I mean, it'd be interesting to measure across there to see if it correlates, if you can find a tape with what the part number is, whether the ZX10 one is 55 across. Let's get my super accurate tape. Not. So no, even that's a no-go. Yeah, interesting. Um, so that's just the thing. I mean, I'd sooner spend the seventy dollars on the fix rather than spending a hundred and forty quid on one of these and the potential for it to grenade again so that's just a little quick video i'll put the pictures up of the different tensioners and you'll see the shim plate on the back side um because that really to me is the only difference but yeah what do i do what do i know i'm just a bloke in shed and uh, i'm off for my tea now guys so it was only a quick one just a, a quick observation but it's, um, I just thought it was worth noting. So thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Right, it's just come in today. Um, and I've got stuff to do today, so I won't be fitting it today. But that the hell line's in. And it's from OHA Motorsport, who are in uh, Bangor, Northern Ireland, which is, I'm guessing about, it's about eight, ten miles. Um, east of uh, Belfast and they are a proper pucker uh, motorsports motorcycle accessory shop etc um, so I'll put the link to this hose um, on the video like I say, I'll actually be fitting this tomorrow because I'm, I'm busy today you in a skip of uh, all the rubbish that was in here basically but uh, for the price of what I've seen just the line um, let's tear it open Everybody likes a, an unwrappaging. Now these never ever uh, look long enough when you first get them. I can pretty much guarantee it will be. And you've got a pair of steel banjos and the crush washers as well and I think it was 30 quid pretty sure of that but I'll put the link in the vid anyway and, and I'm just tacking this on the um, on the end of the old um, tensioner video uh, so yeah we'll fit that tomorrow guys because I've got to do some moving about to get the bike in a position to uh, film with so yeah I suppose I could add this on to the fitting video now nah, I'll give you a treat. You can have you can have a couple. Oh my good. As an addendum to the video, um, I have um, you know strike me guilty. Uh, bought lines off eBay before. Uh, no known brand. Uh, just like the budgie cheap. And at first sight, the quality was okay. But I have noticed. With the cheaper lines, which are in inevitably um, Chinkanese specials, the fittings can be well off. And by well off, I mean the rotation of them. The clutch fitting on this bike, fortunately, uh, they're both in the same plane. So they're both the clutch slave cylinder is like that, and then the master cylinder is again that in orientation. And I found some of the Chinese ones to be in really odd angles to each other really odd so you end up twisting the line trying to fit it invariably 
um, they leaked. So it wouldn't say anything more about that. And also proper crush washers. Um, the, the crush washers that come with the Chinese kit were but basically looked like an aluminium washer with an o-ring in it and you know just looking at it ain't going to stand up and the banjos were a bit sketchy these weighty buggers they are weighty uh, these are stainless beautifully machined really nice cock on so yeah so you can have another video with me fitting it and no doubt swearing i've just put it up against the bike um, loads of length uh, so it's not going to be an issue if, if it's long enough it's going to be bang on and i think it was glenn he was asking because obviously the idle control on the zx10 actually attaches to a rubber like grommet that slips in the frame on the clutch line and i believe you can actually reuse one of them grommets and i think you just bore it out a bit i'm thinking but we'll find out tomorrow won't we so uh, i'll catch up with you again tomorrow guys but for now you can have you can have this video as a as a gift from me you lucky people